What's going on everybody and um, welcome back and to the channel now today we are back here with an upload firstly I just like to say apologies for no uploads since last Monday unfortunately I did get quite sick and really was just bedridden didn't have a lot going on didn't really get to keep up to date with a whole lot of cricket that was going on so this is kind of my refresher back into the cricket world and we're here with India v Australia the series is over the ID Oh, the IDFC trophy. I think this one was called something like that. It is as big as the World Cup and we are here. And we're going to review it. We're not going to go through th this particular game, but we are going to be running through all the statistics from everything, you know, most runs, most wickets, most fucking catches, most poos in the toilet, all of that good stuff. We're going to cover right here in this series. So, hey, if you are new around here, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and comment down below all of your thoughts on this series. Of course, we knew this was going to be an interesting and a topsy-turvy sort of series. You know, literally three days after a big World Cup finishes, both teams were in the final, and then they were expected to go trot out and play, you know, a five-match T20 series. We know different teams, of course, none of the big, big guns on both sides are there. Like, we've seen Glenn Maxwell for a little bit. We've seen Travis Head for a little bit. We've seen Smith for a little bit. Obviously, no Coley Hitman on the other side. So it's been an interesting kind of series, watching a lot of players develop on the big stage. And we're going to get into it. Lots of big things did happen. So, of course, look, everyone probably knows the series score. If you don't, India did win the series 4-1. Now, does that upset me? No, I don't really care. Look, all I wanted from this series was great contests, which we pretty much got in every single game, was a pretty good finish in the end. Lots of wickets, big runs, there were a few tons. We watched Rinku Singh just put himself on the international stage in front of everyone now, so now everyone can respect the greatness. And just a lot of improvements, I think, from both sides that will be better for it coming into a T20 World Cup next year. So hey, let's get straight into it. We're not here to fuck spiders. We're going to get straight into it. Most runs is what we're here for. Um, yeah, like we know the series result. I'm not going to delve into each game and stuff because I've pretty much done that. So most runs, just kind of a, an overview. The vice captain, Root to Raj Gaikwad. It has to be that Tyler impact right there. Five matches, one not out. 223 runs, a high score of 123, which was just a blitz of an innings. Averaged 55 for the series, 100 and one half ton. He was superb. Obviously, the leading run scorer of the series, but in every game, he pretty much turned up to play. Um, and you know what? I've been a little bit skeptical of, of Guykwood's inclusion in so much Indian team setups recently, but he definitely should be a part of it. Like, I honestly, he, he's really good. Um, and it would not surprise me if India tried to slot him into like a T20 World Cup position next year be between, you know, him and Jaius Wall, Ishan. Like, one of those guys probably has to be a part of the 11 almost or the squad. It's interesting to, to really think which one they might go with. Suri Kumar Yadav, the skipper. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he was pretty good. A little bit of hit and miss here and there, but, he, you know, just regular Surya stuff. He is a tw T20 extraordinaire. Of course, the World Cup, not how he wanted it to go, but high score of 80, averages 28, which, yeah, is... It's not great. Like, an average of 28 is okay for five match T20s as the skipper. You know, he did come out at different scenarios of the game and he just had to try and tonk everything to the boundary so a little bit unfair on the average there but the second reading uh, leading run scorer had a half century not bad so you'd probably take that if you're Suya Kumar Yadav Jaiswal so the top three run getters all all Indian players so it probably shows a lot how Australia went here Jaiswal five games 138 runs high score of only the 53 which I think was in the first game correct me if I'm wrong average of just 27 only the one half century so if it's me and you've got to pick a World Cup team tomorrow and you've got to choose between Jaiswal and Guykwood you probably have to go off this records here and say that Guykwood would be in front but the most aesthetically pleasing player that's like coming up in today's cricket world is that man Jais Wall. I mean, he is just a sexy player to watch. There's no other way to put it. The first Australian, Matthew Wade, the captain. I still don't really understand what he was doing on this series, this tour as the captain. He's not even got an Australian contract, I thought, but he was the captain. Moses Reeks was right there to pick. Wasn't even in the squad. 
yeah, I mean, if you guys want a full rant video on that, I can do that. But Matthew Wade, five games, four innings, 128 runs, a high score of 42, not out. And I think that was in the game where we actually ended up winning. Uh, so that was pretty good there. An average of 128. So... Yeah, what the hell? I didn't even know that. So he didn't go out, not out three times. So you know what? Fair play to Wadey down the order. Usually in Australian conditions, he opens up the batting for the Hobart Hurricanes. But coming in at number five, number six, like a usual wicket keeper in these games, he was actually quite good. And we've seen him do that in the T20 World Cup against Pakistan a few years ago. So I'll never forget that. Josh Inglis had a century in the first game and then essentially said, fuck this, I am out. So he made 110 in the first game, and then he played two more games and made a combined runs of 12. So yeah, that's that's Josh Inglis in a nutshell, um, unfortunately. Glenn Maxwell played two games, and we know what he did in one of those games, hit one of the more fantastic knocks in just true Glennie Max style, isn't it? Just right there, 122. No, hold on, if I can read properly. Two games, 116 runs, a high score of 104, an average of 116, strike rate of 200, like, yeah, that's Glenn Maxwell. And if you have been listening, if well, even if you don't listen to Australian media and cricket news, it's sounding like that man G Maxwell may just get his baggy green. Oh, again, he may get to wear the baggy green very, very soon again. So very happy for Glennie Max. He deserves it. And I hope we see him in the test format. We'll just go quickly through a few of these. Ishan Kishan, Rinku Singh, the GOAT, uh, Travis Head, Tim David, Benny McDermott, and SPD Smith, Matt Short, Stoinis. Oh, yeah. Just a bunch of other stuff down the bottom. So we then go on to the most wickets. Now, the player of the series, Ravi Bishnoi, former Punjab Kings legend. Don't forget that. Luck now, Super Giants player now. Um, but yeah, look, he was fantastic. Five, five, played all five, 20 overs, only 164 coming off it. So actually a little bit expensive, but takes the most poles, nine, best bowling of three for 32, average of just 18, economy of eight, which is always Bishnoi's problem. He can be a little bit expensive, but he does still, you just see, you you know, when people compare him to Rashid Khan, you can see why. Like there's just those little components of the same action, the way that they bowl, the amount of revs they're putting on the fucking ball. Like, and even the celebration, like Bishnoi loves the celebration. Plenty like Rashid. So, you know what? Uh, I don't know what is next for Bishnoi. Like, is he going to be good enough to be a World Cup spinner? Or is he just going to be this guy who's like in the India A team but never pushes on? I don't know. But he, he was quite good this series. Berendorf, very impressed. Left armor. He's always been given opportunity for Australia in the white ball format. Just can't really stay healthy. But this is awesome here. Super happy for the Dorf machine. And he's an absolute ripper. Like Berendorf could have been, I don't want to say Mitchell Stark, but he could have been really something like more like one of Australia's great left arm seamers. It didn't turn out that way, but he is, you know, with age, he's getting a little bit better, uh, takes the six wickets, was bloody economical, as good as it gets. So very impressed there with the Big Bash League starting in a few days or something like that. So he, hopefully he gets home soon and can start playing. Aksar Patel, he was good. Uh, he played all five games. Wow. But Ben Dwarshus. Now, some people may not have heard of this man. He's been around... Gee whiz, the Sydney Sixers set up for, for like five, six years now. Um, a very good bowler on the money, but then he just gets quite loose and can go for a lot of runs. So played the two games, three for 40 was his best, takes five wickets, goes for 70 runs, not bad. That's good experience. Tanvir Sanger, Mikesh Kumar, Prasid Krishna, Nathan Alice, Arshdeep Singh. So that's just all of the regular stuff there amongst the names, of course. Deepak Chaha, only the one game. Kane Richardson, only the one game as well. And just to pick out someone else, Arshdeep Singh. Hold on a minute. Let's not go past the man. Four matches, 96 runs only. That's no, that's balls. Hold on. That's the wrong thing. 171 runs, four wickets, three for 45 was his best. No, two for 40. Yeah, I am just having trouble reading properly this morning, but that is essentially it. I just wanted to, again, do a nice little recap video running through the stats, who impressed me, who let us down. Um, and we've got our final thing here, something that ESPN does. It's like their most valuable players by impact. So Aksar Patel, the most impactful player, did it with the runs, made uh, 
made runs, took wickets if I can do that. Bishnoi, Berendorf, Guykwood, Jaiswal, the man Tanvir Sanger, Inglis, Surya, Glennie Max. And let's go all the way to the bottom. Who let us down the most? Ugh, Chris Green after one game. That's rough going, son. Um, Talak Varma. Yeah, no. That's... I forgot about him, uh, low key. Like, he started the series and then kind of didn't see him much after that. So, you know, he's so young. He's going to get so, so good. He's going to be so amazing of a player for Team India. But not to be this series. Krishna, probably not to be. Zampa, of course, went home. Smith went home. Chaha, Richardson barely played. Avesh Khan, the flu king, he was okay. Tim David, eh. Stoinis, eh. McDermott, eh. But he, he did something last night, so that was impressive. And I think that's all to really mention of this one um, here as my mouse decides to bring up corruption. What the fuck? I mean, ESPN, sort yourself out. But hey, that is going to cap us off. India do win the series 4-1. And that is officially Australia's tour of India. We've come away with a World Cup. We've lost the f this series 4-1. Don't mind that. It's been a lot of learning curves. It's been an incredible tour in India. Um, and the boys are all coming home. To now then literally days later start playing the big bash and then the test summer so there's not much of a rest for any single person in this cricket world cricket does not stop and it will not stop here i will be covering it all so hey if you're new subscribe leave a like comment down below all of your thoughts from this series again and i'll see everyone in the next one